lightweight mini coax. Is this stuff holding back your portable operations, especially if you're running low power? Let's find out next on AA3K On The Go. Hello, I'm Mark, AA3K, and welcome to another episode of AA3K On The Go, where I'm trying to help you make the outdoors your ham shack. So, when I built my QRP backpack, I decided I wanted to get some lightweight coax to go with it. And at my club's uh, ham fest, we had a vendor show up uh, who has shown up for many years, and his primary business is making custom RF cables for the industry, but he stocks quality products and he brings them out to the ham fest. And he had hunks of 50 feet of RG174 coax. So I grabbed that, some connectors, the RG174 co coax uh, adapters for these PL259s, and whipped up a 50 foot hunk of it. Not too long ago, I was just uh, perusing uh, coaxes and I punched into my computer uh, and Googled RG179 instead of RG174 and I was shocked when I came up with, oh my God, I purchased 75 ohm coax. And I very quickly went online to what's becoming one of my uh, favorite dealers for cables, short cables, adapters, connectors, and ordered a 50 foot length of RG316. When I went back and looked more closely at what is printed on this cable, it is RG174, it is 50 ohm cable. I didn't need to do that. But since I now had RG174 and 316, I decided to figure out how to do coax loss measurements with my rig expert AA55. And that was actually the first coax that I actually did do such a measurement with. And though I didn't write down any numbers, I was very shocked at what the loss was in RG174 and a little bit less shocked in 316. So hence, I've done some more formal measurements and collected some data, which we're going to show you here in this video. So sit back and uh, we'll run through what I found out for RG174 versus RG316. Okay, very similar setup to testing if coax affects and fed half waves, uh, but in this case I don't need an antenna. I'm just going to compare my 50 foot lengths of RG174 and 316 and going to my data acquisition center, which is again my trusty HP laptop and rig expert AA55 that is connected to the computer via USB so I can do screen captures through rig expert software. And going to run the coax loss measurement, which requires an open circuit at the end of the coax, and then a short circuit via my trusty little short circuit device. In a moment, the results. All right, let's take a look at the actual measured values for the RG174 and the RG316 coax. My rig expert AA55 zoom uh, will cover from 60 kilohertz up to 55 megahertz. And we can see at the very lowest frequencies, the RG174 has about 0.75 dB of loss and it rises quite quickly. Uh, whereas the one, I'm sorry, as the 316 is only at half a dB and rises a little bit and then they both very much go into a linear uh, of about the same loss. So I measured at the same frequencies that I did for the RG8X and Potaflex 7 video. And as you can see, all of the losses are over 1 dB and significantly higher than we had with RG8X or Potaflex. And as you can see, I got a little fancier in my PowerPoint skills here. What I decided to do was take those losses uh, and using an online calculator, put five watts in and at that loss, how much uh, power is actually being lost. So with the RG174 at each of these frequencies, and feel free to stop the video at any time so you can get a more careful read of these values. 
at 7.150 megahertz putting 5 watts into the RG174 and at 1.62 dB of loss you're only getting 3.44 watts out which is a little bit more than a watt and a half of loss which in my opinion is quite significant uh, it's a little bit better but not significantly with the RG316 and you can look at the other values in all cases you're getting less than 4 watts out and if you should try to go up to 10 megahertz, you're getting close to 3 dB, the half power point, and losing a good chunk of your power just in the coax. If you go all the way up to 6 meters, you're definitely losing over half your power in the coax. Doing the same calculation with RG8X and Potaflex 7, and the losses that I previously measured and displayed in a comparison of those coaxes, you're losing at most just about one watt at 10 meters, and even less than that with the Potaflex 7. So, hence why I think I might be using RG8X more often when I'm doing QRP operations and not dragging everything along with me. So, I quickly took all of those numbers and put them in one slide. Again, feel free to stop the video and get a good read here. So, for 5 watts in, you're losing you know, a good chunk of your power in the RG174 and 316. And again, that's with 50 feet of coax. If you shorten it to 20, 25 feet, these numbers will probably drop by half. And you'll be getting that much more power actually into your antenna, which, face it, that's what's going to be radiating the signal, not your coax. Alrighty, hopefully you've had uh, a moment to really digest those numbers from measuring the RG174 versus the 316 coax. Uh, personally, they're not very impressive. Uh, concerns me the amount of loss there. When you're operating at 5 watts from, say, my uh, Yaesu FT817 and its brethren, you're losing 20% of your power. You're only getting about 4 watts, possibly even less, out. Uh, that's not so much of a problem if you're running a ICOM 705 with an external battery giving you 10 watts, then you're only going to lose 20%, 2 watts. And if you get up to, say, a 20-watt capable rig like a, a Zygu Shegu G90, uh, you're going to be losing four watts or so. You know, you're still putting out six watts in that case, eight watts in the 705. But when you're running QRP, uh, you do need to get heard. I'm also a member of a very well-known contesting club. I do my fair share of contesting, though it's not my only interest within amateur radio. So, you know, getting your power to the antenna so you can be loud, you can be heard, you can get contacts during a contest is a very important thing. And I do tend to approach my uh, Parks on the Air activations as contests, though Parks on the Air is not a contest. Uh, but I do want to make sure as many possible hunters out there can hear me, which is why I usually run uh, 100 watts from my uh, ICOM 7300, or in the past, my ICOM 706 Mark II G. When I think about, you know, RG316 versus 178, and the amount of power loss in there. I'm now starting to consider bringing, when I don't intend to do a long hike or anything like that for a QRP operation, of bringing RG8X with me so I can maximize my power gain to the antenna. Uh, there we are losing you know, barely half a dB on the uh, 20 and 40 meter bands and getting uh, you know, better than four watts actually to the antenna. And when I put together my ultra portable HF Go kit, uh, one of the reasons I decided not to carry any coax with me was to minimize the loss there. Really, the primary reason was to cut down the weight. But the K6ARK NFED half wave transformer just goes directly on the radio and no coax needed. Though I do have to worry about this with 65 feet of wire attached of taking the radio and going zing off the table. I don't want to exactly lose this cute little radio uh, in terms of having it broken or such. The orange case kind of makes it really hard to miss. And hopefully nobody thinks I'm a spy with a bright orange radio because I might have to make another trip to Korea and I'm thinking of taking this with me. If I can get it past the uh, Korean amateur radio organization there, they do require a serial number and the serial number for this one is hard coded into the bootloader and uh, not displayable when you're running the radio. 
So looking at RG316 versus 174 pluses or minuses, they're about the same weight. I do have full-size PL259s with 174 adapters on it. This RG316 has proper size 316 uh, PL259s on it that were factory installed. Uh, you know, they're lightweight, they coil up. I could probably coil both of these up a little bit tighter. Uh, so they are convenient to carry, particularly if you do know you're gonna be uh, trudging a few feet to your operating site. Most of my operating sites are within a few minutes of my car, so carrying the RG8X won't be a problem. But uh, the one disadvantage I see from the 174 versus the 316 is if you notice here, uh, this coax is kind of standing straight out and these two are drooping like wet spaghetti. Uh, the 174 is extremely flexible and I do find as I'm unwinding it in particular, the coax will fall inside the loop as I'm unwinding and such and I end up with a bit of a knot to untangle. This has been much easier in the field. For long-term installations, the black will definitely help resist UV degradation. The black is usually created by carbon added to the plastic mix and that's a good UV absorber. I'm not sure uh, in terms of the plastic used on here. Uh, from one lookup of the tech specs for RG316, uh, it was some sort of polyethylene or polyurethane. I forget the details, but it was not just simple vinyl. That's where we are. So uh, a future video, I do intend to set up a NFED half wave and use each of these antennas and run against Whisper and see what the end results are. Does that loss of a watt of a power make a big difference in the field? And I'll present the results there. Hey, thank you for watching. This is Mark AA3K73. And remember, I'm trying to help you make the outdoors your ham shack.